festive season echo happy festive season indeed happy candle nights even perhaps yeah that works too so we promised an update about the monoliths <laughs> and we never did it yeah we, i didn't even look it up i i did because i heard some shit on youtube oh awesome that a youtuber is trying to claim that he's <laughs> behind all this shit but I highly doubt it when I start going through this stuff okay. before we get to our main topic. Yeah. Because let's face it, this is weird, strange, and unusual and happening right now. So it takes a little more precedence. So, of course, the yeah. first one was in Utah, right? Yeah. Okay. It was discovered on November 18th, right? And then it disappeared, was taken, whatever, on November 23rd. That's important. Yeah. Important to remember. So there were four unidentified men that showed up and removed this monolith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were removing it for respect to the land, whatever. So then on December 2nd, right, a monolith was discovered on a hiking trail in California. Yes. It was 10 foot tall and was estimated to weigh 200 pounds. And it disappeared the next day on December 3rd in the morning. And there are people trying to take credit for erecting these things. And then around December 5th, another, another monolith seemed to have mysteriously appeared a, tr a national tree uh, park in California. And then around the same time in Santa Clara, California, another one popped up by the highway on December 5th or the 6th and disappeared. I could just see like a bunch of people being all like, oh my God, that was crazy. Let's put these everywhere. I know, but 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 you're gonna giggle more, right? Because um, Okay, I'm it, ready. Yeah, so so there's all that. And then in North Carolina on December 5th. A three-foot monolith popped up. Then um, there was a candy shop in Pittsburgh that had a hoax one where they built it on purpose uh, to try nice. to get support for small businesses, which at least they were taking something relevant. I don't mock yeah, them necessarily. Because, I mean, them. Hey, if it's going to get people to your shop, whatever. So yeah. then... In Texas, a structure was captured on video by a local news station on December 8th before disappearing later that day. Oh and God. footage showed to social media, uh, shared to social media, showed a group of people putting the object in a truck. So there was another monolith in Texas. And then in Romania on November 28th, a, um, one popped up. Similar looking to the one in Utah. Perfect. And Any then, more? And then on December 1st, it was rumored that the monolith had disappeared. Yes, there's more. Don't worry. <laughs> the United <laughs> Kingdom. So according to Sky News and BBC on December 7th, a smaller structure was spotted over the weekend on the aisles of I'm not sure how to say this, so I'm just going to skip it. It was a beach located off the southern coast of England. And so they reached out, you know, for information. And then on December 9th, BBC reported another monolith was discovered by walkers um, in Glinstenburg, Thor? Thor? I don't know. A hill near southern England town of the same name. The monolith, unlike the others, had popped up. Uh, this monolith, unlike the others having popped up around the world, was seen 
seen by walkers laying on its side with the words not Banksy engraved on it. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Into one of the sides in a stencil in a stencil drawing of a rat similar that to this to the style that of that of the famous street artist nice <laughs> then in finland a structure similar to the one seen across the u.s a mysterious um monolith appeared around december 10th and then on 11th one appeared in poland oh and gosh. then on december 10th one appeared in the ukraine then on december 11th one appeared in australia and there's your monolith update for this week yay okay so <laughs> also about the about monoliths that. yeah about the monoliths it was kind of hilarious the last time my sister was over her and my dad had a big old conversation that technically these monoliths shouldn't be called monolith because they're made of metal not stone and lith is like it means stone i love your family yeah so she's just like it's not a monolith it's not made of stone i'm like well then why don't we just call it an obelisk i thought about bringing it up around mine but they probably would be like that what yeah or they'll be like that's just something real dumb this is people being dumb. <laughs> so, any other wacky news before we get into Christmas traditions and stuff? Oh, I don't think I've heard anything else crazy. Okay. Well, you guys can technically argue that this whole, the last three episodes, technically, well, the last two plus this one. So, these three Christmas themed ones have all been Christmas tradition related because, you know, they have yeah. been. But uh, sure. I thought, you know, just for random fun, we'd just talk about some of the other stuff people do because, you know, why not? So I'm going to skip down to one of my lower ones that I had on my list. But it, it's an easy one, okay? So okay, do tell our listeners, especially those that maybe don't do this, or that don't live in the U.S. What do we Americans leave for Santa Claus? Cookies and milk. Cookies obviously. and milk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now. My family actually has never done that. We always talk about it. And then we're like, no, we're eating all the cookies and drinking all the milk. None for you, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, that seems nice, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to take a guess of what they leave for santa in ireland do they leave mashed potatoes no oh they leave a about some mash he gets a nice pint of guinness and some mince pies that is very kind of them i'm sure santa needs a drink although he shouldn't drink and slay hey guinness is a you know, is a heavy beer. And I can say that because I drink it. Yeah. And it's very delicious. And, you know. And as to one who's been to Ireland, I can say Guinness is legitimately everywhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought that was an interesting little fact. Well, while we're on the topic, why don't we just go through some of the, the traditional stuff some people eat? So uh, now we're going to take a little trip over to, um, you know, South Africa, right? Okay. So when you think of Christmas foods, name some Christmas foods. Uh, Here it's usually turkey or ham. Turkey, ham. If we're talking, uh, you know, the UK probably mince pie. Things like that, right? Uh Okay. So in South... Yep, and in Italy, they often eat fish. Yeah. Because I think it's a Catholic thing. Yeah. Well, so in South Africa, <laughs> they've got us all beat on a weird Christmas food, in my opinion. All right. They eat something that's a little creepy, and a little crawly, 
And the local chill, it says the local children look forward to this. They have some fried caterpillars on Christmas. And it may seem like one of the weirdest Christmas traditions around the world, but these caterpillars aren't just the -the run-of-the-mill variety that you find in your garden. Yeah, they are the great big ones, right? They are pine tree emperor moth or the Christmas caterpillar. It is covered in very festive hues, giving all that swallow it a little extra luck in the coming year. The picture was gross, (laughs) at least to me. I don't think I would eat that. It was. Thank you for not showing me. Thank you so much for not showing me. (laughs) Especially if it's a fuzzy caterpillar, I just can't. I'd rather you not yeet all of your stomach contents onto the screen. Yeah, especially because I had Taco Bell for dinner. Oh, yeah, please don't keep it in you. (laughs) And then we're going to hop on over to Japan for what they eat. So in Japan, Christmas is a... um, It's not really celebrated much over there. They don't consider it a religious occasion in the country. But thanks to one very, very popular ad campaign in 1974, most, and I looked at what the ad slogan was. I am not even going to try to pronounce it because I would be completely wrong. But it translated into... Um, hold on, because I don't think I left that up. Uh, I think it was Kentucky for Christmas. Basically, it was an ad campaign for Kentucky Fried Chicken. And because of this, many, many people in Japan eat Kentucky Fried Chicken for Christmas. So, in fact, it is so popular to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken from December 23rd to the 25th in Japan that people have to start placing their orders two months in advance to secure their holiday dinner. And it oh, no. and the dinner ranges to, it comes out to be about $20 in U.S. currency. And oh, it wow. didn't tell me, I'm, I'm thinking it's a single person dinner. I don't think it's like what we have here where it's a bucket of chicken. It didn't really explain much on it. I need to look yeah. more into that. But everywhere I found it, it was just all like, you know, it wasn't cheap and you have to get it months in advance ordered. Yeah. And it just seems like the most normal thing to me. I can just go get Kentucky Fried Chicken now. It's not that special. But apparently yeah. over there, because of this ad campaign, they went nuts Sounds to me Nuts. like KFC tricked the Japanese into thinking that that's what well, we eat for Christmas. K- <laughs> KFC is really popular over there, was another yeah. thing that I read. So it didn't surprise me too much, but it just kind of kind of cracked me up. So we're going to move away from the food, I think, for a minute. And uh, I've got one more, and then I'll let Echo tell you a couple things. Okay. But this one made me giggle because I feel this in my soul. Who hates cleaning? Like everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Most people don't enjoy the task of cleaning something. So this Norway Christmas tradition might actually be for you. So for a long time, Norwegians believed that on December 24th was the day when witches and spirits would come out and take to the skies. Now, what do witches ride? Their main means their main means of transportation is a broom. So <laughs> folks in this country will hide their brooms and cleaning supplies before Christmas in order to keep witches from coming into their house. Just imagine hiding your vacuum cleaner from a witch. That'd be hocus pocus level shit. <laughs> I'm crying. I was laughing so hard at myself. Would you like to take over for a few? Yeah, sure. 
or at least tell me a couple because you have some stuff yeah i do have some stuff so um in japan back to japan their christmas dessert traditionally is strawberry shortcake it's oh heck yeah light, yeah it's a light fluffy sponge cake with whipped cream filling and whipped cream topping and it's topped with whole strawberries and there's whole strawberries in the middle as well i got a little picture here Ooh, for you to see good. there's scarlet that looks way better know, looks than so delicious. any of the strawberry shortcakes i've ever seen here but yeah. oh i know here we just have these little pre-made discs of like sponge cake that you put strawberry goop on top of and whipped cream but like this thing it's like a layer cake and there's strawberries sliced on top and some nice fluffy little whipped cream blobs and then there's a layer of the sponge cake and then whipped cream in the middle with strawberry chunks in the whipped cream and then layer cake on the bottom it looks so good guys um I say, oh, yeah, but I also forget that I love my spice cakes and yeah. gingerbread because, you know. Japan hosts a European-style Christmas market throughout the winter season, usually in Hokkaido and Kyushu. And they've got hot cider, tree ornaments, and they have like a German tourism association there. The German embassy comes out and does like a big old European style Christmas thing for the Japanese. Of course, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without going shopping. And so malls in Japan are no strangers to Christmas decor. They've got traditional trees and ornaments and goods for sale. And they can be found at any major mall or department store. And they exchange gifts like we do. And they most commonly exchange them before New Year's. Because New Year's is a bigger deal in Japan than it tends to be here. Like, I know usually we kind of do it up a little bit for New Year's. No, it's not going to be like that this year. But Who's it up for New Year's? Oh, yeah. We're going to all be drinking at home alone for New Year's. <laughs> Bunch of whiskey and Cokes that night for me, I guess. Oh, oh no, that's, I, my, that's my drink when I scream. I'll have to come up with yeah. something different. <laughs> Ooh, I really you know want to oh, get my ahead. sister's mulled wine recipe for Christmas oh, and New Year's. That's, this year. that's what I was going to tell you about. And I guess I, it, we'll just talk about it on the podcast because it yeah. fits into Christmas. We took that witch's brew wine that I bought. Mm-hmm. We we still have the bottle. I might take a picture of it. We put it on the stove because I had opened it and tried it and it's already spiced. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this probably shouldn't be cold because it's like way too spiced to technically. I mean, it still yeah. tastes good cold. It just was weird. So I put it in a saucepan because I don't have a crock pot to just, yeah. you know, molt wine in. So I just put it like up high enough to get it started. Mm. And then uh, once it was warm, I put orange juice in my cup first because we don't have oranges. And uh, I topped it off with that. So it still stayed hot. It was so good. But I'm willing to bet you if you cut yourself some oranges and put you some cinnamon sticks in it, you'd have pretty much show exactly what you want. Mm. That sounds really good. I might have to check that out. Another thing I've been wanting to try, and I noticed this year, like every, I don't know if it's just like you know, our town thing, but every year at Christmas, we at Walmart, they have that whole big old table full of like alcohol, like Christmas gift packs. Yeah. And they haven't had that this year because I went Which in is looking odd. for it. Yeah. And I, I'm just like, I don't know if they're like, I, I don't know, but. I was upset because I was like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of what I wanted to get some people was because usually they come with like a glass or like a mixer or like some kind of fancy yeah. bottle because it's Christmas. And sometimes you can get the candy canes with like the, the shots in it. Yeah. And 
I was so upset because they didn't have it because usually on that display, they have the, I want to say Smirnoff peppermint vodka. I know, or maybe it's peppermint schnapps. I don't know. Yeah. It's I mean, some kind of peppermint. Right. Don't know which brand or what kind or anything. I don't, I don't care. It's good. I like it. But I read online because I've only ever got like the little itty bitty ones and I just drink it straight out of there because I'm yeah. crazy. <laughs> I like mint too. So I guess it doesn't phase me. But mm-hmm. I read online that you put that in cranberry juice and it's like the best thing ever. Oh my gosh. That sounds really good. Yeah. See, I'm just not <laughs> like, so now I've been on, I'm, I'm on this hunt. I could go to the liquor store, I guess, but I was just yeah. They avoid probably it. have it, but yeah, I get that. Okay, so moving on, you know how here in America we kind of do it up with our lights and stuff. Like yes. a lot of people go crazy with their Christmas lights. Apparently, the Japanese do it way bigger and way better. <laughs> Um, like famous landmarks and public parks and in midtown and major malls I guess they have like the biggest lights displays like that there ever could be and judging from this picture that's on here they've got like all the trees through like their midtown downtown uh, downtown type area all lit up in beautiful white lights oh pretty see it you say bigger and better lights. but do they sync their lights to music i kind of doubt that it doesn't say in this article but it's definitely beautiful because um i saw this thing on tiktok and um somebody had built like two trees out of lights like one taller one and one shorter one and the trees were talking to each other and the smaller tree was off cue <laughs> best christmas tiktok video i think i've seen I know, best christmas light display so i want to know where that display is that one to me it's so funny <laughs> and cute oh my gosh i was just like because like let's be honest at this mm-hmm. rate all the regular Christmas songs and all I want for Christmas and you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch have been totally overdone on those yeah. Christmas light shows so much. So to have something that was scripted and funny, it, 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 it just made my day. Absolutely. Is that all you have for Japan? No, no. Um, the Japanese also enjoy attending the Tokyo Disney Christmas parade. I mean, I feel like anybody would enjoy that. Yeah, but like, it's, I guess, I guess it's like a big thing, especially for families with children. And it's a popular date spot for couples on Christmas Eve. Hmm. And a lot of times, I guess, Christmas Eve is more of a couple's holiday. It's kind of like a Valentine's Day thing for them. Cute. Yeah. So they like to book romantic dinners at fancy restaurants and it's often hard to find a seat because so many people are going on dates those nights so i don't know i just think that's cute i like that they make it like a second valentine's day so that's all i have on japan now okay so we're gonna go to the ukraine so they have a tiny bit of a strange tradition and it kind of isn't for arachnophobia did I say that right? Arachnophobians? I am maybe not sure. People with arachnophobia. Yes. <laughs> is what you mean by that, at least. <laughs> so, um, you know, where we put, you know, baubles and tinsel and, and the star on the tree, right? Yeah, and the yeah. strings of lights, obviously. Yeah. So so they opt for a more, you know, minimalistic natural forming spider's web gross shape. but more power to shimmering them, with dew and see i think some of them though now are probably like part of 
official thing? Yeah. Because they make but like oh just imagine. Make, yeah, they make them to look their decorations to look like spider webs, basically. Yeah. So this tradition goes back to a folk tale, which me and you love folk tales. That's mm-hmm. half the basis of this podcast. About a poor widow who couldn't afford to decorate her tree for her children. And legend has it that the spiders in the house took pity on the family and they spun beautiful webs all over the tree, which the children awoke to find on Christmas morning. And they're also, the spider's webs are also considered to be lucky in that culture. So I thought that was kind of neat. Well, that is a very sweet story. Uh, I still don't want spiders in my general vicinity. We're going to talk about something else that they do with the Christmas tree, since I kind of grouped these up nicely. Okay. So, except we're talking about something else that's done with a Christmas tree. But it's said to have started in Germany. Now, there's some speculation that it didn't. There's some speculation that maybe it started in Spain. but. Basically, there is a tradition where they hide a pickle in the Christmas tree, somewhere in the branches of the tree. Okay. And they give like an extra gift to whatever child in the household finds the pickle in the tree. Okay, then. And I guess now mostly they just like hang like a pickle ornament on the tree. Yeah. But I, I'm that's basically that's just the logistics of the article that I read about it. That's I I was reading about a whole bunch of traditions in one article, and that's what they had about it. And I was like, well, there's gonna be a lot to this podcast. So just it just cracked me up that they hide a pickle. That like, is, of all that things that you silly. can hide. Now, see, I remember hearing something about hiding a pickle. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know where it came from. So I'm guessing it comes from here. Yeah, probably. But um, a pickle. That's just, yeah. it cracks me up. I guess it's green. Yeah, so it kind of blends in. See, uh-huh. the, only, the only hidden thing that I ever had to worry about on Christmas was um my great aunts used to put like a bean in some cake Mm -hmm. that's that's a tradition too yeah yeah my great aunts used to always put a bean in the cake and they're like if you find a bean you can have a special thing and i don't think anybody ever found a bean i think they were just teasing us it it in the (laughs) the thing that i read about it was it was supposed to be a string bean like a like a green bean okay um, yeah i think they use like <laughs> if they use like a like a pinto bean, bean somebody totally ate that probably <laughs> i'm just like there's no bean you're fibbing <laughs> that's funny mm. so where else do you have stuff from for us i have some things from Sweden, if you'd like to hear about Sweden. Let's do Sweden, then, because I have a Sweden one, too, if you don't have it. Alrighty. So, for Sweden, um, they they tend to have everything during their celebration build up to Christmas Eve. Like, that's their main event, whereas, like, Christmas morning is kind of our main event. Mm -hmm. Um. So I thought that was kind of interesting. They also have their decorations a little more natural and a little more minimal than we usually have over here. So that's not like a lot of glitzy, gaudy lights and all this sparkle and everything. But like they have like their Christmas tree, they have a wreath on their door, they've got their candles, and that's about as big as they go with it. They also light Advent candles in their home. And I know we do that like at our churches and stuff around this time of year, but like they do it at home. Like they start 
four weeks before Christmas, they light their first candle, and then they light one every Sunday up until Christmas as part of their build-up to, like, the big day. They, they always hand out their presents after dark on Christmas Eve, and luckily for the kiddos, about this time of year in Sweden, nighttime comes at about 2 p.m. Oh. Yeah. Lucky ducks. So, yeah, so they don't have to wait that long for their gifts. So, lucky kids. Um, and something really fun about the way they wrap, wrap their gifts is they usually don't go for, like, fancy paper or anything like that. It's just, like, wrapped simply and, like, they put a tag on it. And the tag has a little rhyme on it to kind of hint at what is in the package. And I think that's really fun. And I think I want to start doing that, but probably not this year because I still don't have anything wrapped. I have not wrapped squat. <laughs> if you do it like you do me every year, I'll just show up to get my my present and you'll just be all like, here, here, and you'll here just set the box here's there. this back in the box that you gave me my stuff in. <laughs> hey, I gave you your stuff in a box because you had a lot of books and they fit I did. in the box. <laughs> they were big books. They are big books. And I still need to do more reading in them. <laughs> okay. And another thing that I thought was kind of odd, but, you know, pretty fun. You know how we have, like, cr- like traditional Christmas movies yeah. that, like, you would watch, like, every year? Like, oh, the, this is what my parents always watched whenever they were kids. And so that's what we grew up watching on Christmas Eve. So... Every year at 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve, everybody gathers around their TV in order to watch 1950s Donald Duck episodes. I don't know why it has to be Donald Duck, but it's the same Donald Duck episode from the 1950s every year. And they all just gather around and watch Donald Duck. And I thought that was pretty funny. Um, And you were talking about food earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, the Swedish serve their Christmas feast as a buffet. So usually they'll have like smoked salmon or pickled herring as like their main dish. But usually they also have ham, sausage, ribs, cabbage, potatoes, and of course, Swedish meatballs. Meat, 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 meat. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Um. And their holiday season goes on a lot longer than ours does. Holiday season ends January 13th for them. And so the 13th of January is the day they take down their decorations. They finish eating any leftover Christmas treats that they haven't finished yet. They'll dance around their Christmas tree and then chuck their tree out the window. That's funny. It is funny. I don't know why they chuck it out the window. I I assume they wouldn't do that if they had, like, a faux Christmas tree. But, yeah, that's what I have for Sweden. What did you have for Sweden? I have something called the Yule Goat. It's a goat! It's a goat! I do like a good goat. So, the Yule Goat dates back to the 11th century where there is mentions of a man-sized goat figure led by St. Nicholas, who had the power to control the devil. (laughs) I love your face right now. (laughs) You're so confused. The the goat had the power to control the devil? Yes. Okay. (laughs) So the old goat, as you can imagine, has changed, obviously, through history. And in the 17th century... It was popular for young men to, you know, dress as the goat creature and run around and pull pranks on people. And they would also demand gifts, you okay. know, as one does. So, so then, a little bit like the Mari Lord, right? And then, yes, but he evolves yet again. In the 19th okay. century, the goat became a good guy, a giver of gifts. Um, and instead of Father Christmas, men in the family would dress up as the goat 
and give gifts to the entire family. Okay. And now today, the goat man is no longer, and the Yule goat has taken place in modern history as a Christmas traditional ornament on most of the trees throughout Sweden and in larger cities. Um, various versions of these ornaments are created out of straw and red ribbon. So, so just big. So, uh, you know. That's very, very interesting. So. I, I was it, a little bit horrified <laughs> at, at people just running around being weird dressed as goats. <laughs> so there's there's another note, ready, that I had also wrote down. Yeah. Um, so a, as you can expect, a giant creature, It this is straight from the article. I'm going to read you the sentence. Mm-hmm. As you may have expected, a giant creature made out of straw is easy prey for pranksters with fire. Many Yule goats meet their demise each year. Yeah, that also sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're all giggly and we're towards the end of the episode, I'm going to bring out the funniest one. And then I might see if there's a couple of others through this one that, oh, Actually, before we get to the funniest one or what I think is the funniest one, I'm going to tell you about this throwing a shoe thing in the Czech Republic. Okay. Um, Yes. So there's a number of Christmas traditions in the Czech Republic that are said to predict whether a woman will get married in the following year. So on Christmas Day, an unmarried woman will throw a shoe behind her back as she faces... um, away from the door so she'll throw it towards the door like this i don't know why i said like this you're the only one that can see me (laughs) and if the shoe lands with the toe pointing the door she will get married within the year but if the heel looks towards the door she will remain single for yet another year so it's like trying to predict whether they'll get married by pure luck (laughs) Okay, so to then each their own. I hope I'm going to say these right, but then I'll just tell you like the English version of this word, which I think is just as funny. So yeah, the trio de natal or the gage trio. I don't think I said that one right. It's also known as the shit log. <laughs> We're gonna call it the poop log. Because I read it as the poop log in a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So this this is a Spain. Uh, this tradition comes from Spain. And uh, it's quite a rather silly tradition. So on December 8th of each year. And then it says the Feast of Immaculate Consumption. Don't know what that means. The family brings out a happy log. And every night until December 24th, children are tasked with feeding this log by offering him nuts, dried fruit, and water. The kids must also cover the poop log with a blanket to ensure that he stays warm and comfy. Okay. So on Christmas Eve, it's time for the poop log to shine. I should also mention that this poop log, right? He is a hollow log with stick legs a smiley face and a floppy red hat he looks silly so i'm here uh, for it on christmas (laughs) eve it's time for him to shine so the children gather around the red hatted branch and uh, they beat him with sticks (laughs) while singing the traditional poop log song the Trio Nadal song, which I'm going to read it to you translated because I'm just not going to try to pronounce all those words because I will get them all wrong and I will just sound silly. So it translates to shit log, shit nougats, hazelnuts, and matado cheese. If you don't shit well, I'll hit you with a stick, shit log. But they're already beating it with sticks. So you know. Yeah, this was like, 
you've already made good on your threat, so it doesn't matter if he poops or not. Right. So <laughs> then comes the miracle. The kids look under the Trina doll or the poop logs blanket and discover the log has pooped out a pile of candy and presents. <laughs> well, if if you don't have room in your house for a Christmas tree, a poop log will have to do. <laughs> so then comes the even funnier messed up part. So the kids have taken, you know, several days taking care of this little thing and covering it in a blanket and then beat it with sticks and sing. And w- what do you think the family does a- after they collect their gifts? Do they toss it in the fireplace? Yes, they burn <laughs> it for warmth. I mean, he's done his job. He has to give it his all, just like the giving tree. <laughs> it was funny because when I was looking up Christmas traditions, a lot of the, um, a lot of, not not what we talked about last week, because last week we did Yule, but mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff we talked about in our first, like, winter Christmas episode thing, uh, a lot of those, those people showed back up. Oh, oh, yeah. Along with, you know, our favorite little goblins. Mm-hmm. They popped up a couple times. So, uh, yeah. Well, I think what we found was enough. Even if it's a shorter episode, you know, it's not that. Not yeah, too crazy think, of an or- ordeal. I think everybody will understand. It's ramping up to Christmas time. People are more busy yeah, than just, they thought they'd be. Yeah. Well, my busy is partly my chill. own fault. Yeah. You know, I decided, hey. You know, not only should I do the job I already have and, you know, and this one, but, you know, let's throw, Mm -hmm. let's throw streaming into it and see how it goes. Yep. Yeah. My craziness is all daycare job related. Hopefully we'll be back to normal in the new year. Don't know what we're going to talk about in the new year yet. I uh, read an article I think might inspire our first. Don't hold us to this. But we might possibly, because of next week being Christmas, we might not have a new episode out on the 27th. Which is because we usually do Sunday. Yeah. So they'll. This one's coming out the week of Christmas. The week after Christmas, we might take an honest break just so we can have stuff yeah. ready for January. And because of the way we record to edit, there might not be an episode until the weekend of January, the second slash third ish time. And then, you know, we should be back to normal after that. You'll get your, you know, all of your episodes there (laughs) i mean i think that sounds fair i think i mean there might be something surprise wise but i i think honestly because of christmas it will throw off our record schedule oh yeah i don't even know what all the plans are yet for christmas i think we Mm -hmm. might still be doing something at my sister amy's house christmas day although my dad is so worried about coronavirus that he doesn't even want us going over to see my sister, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, we've got to get them their Christmas presents. Yeah. So, anyway, real quick, you can send that to stories at hotmail.com. Please make sure you put in the description. That it is, you know, a story you want us to share. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you can send that there. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so. If you want to follow us on Instagram, we're there, I promise, under Strange, Weird, and Unusual. On Twitter, it is Strange, Weird, UN1. And we're on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. You can like us there. We're trying to get better about posting. We promise. (laughs) 
Um, but I think that's about it. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.